Saudi Arabia just shocked the world with what it's building. Humanoid robots designed to live among people. Driverless robot taxis are already on public streets. AI data centers are powerful enough to train the future of intelligence itself. Cities that stretch for miles instead of rising upward. Mountains engineered to create snow in the middle of the desert. And a floating industrial city taking shape in the Red Sea. Let's start with the AI robots designed to feel human. Saudi Arabia isn't just entering the global humanoid race. It's shaping how humanoid robots should fit into society. And the clearest example of that shift comes from QSS Robotics. Let's start with Sarah. Sarah is the first female humanoid robot developed in Saudi Arabia, and what makes her different isn't raw hardware power or flashy movements. It's intent. Sarah wasn't designed to look futuristic. She was designed to feel familiar. Her appearance, posture, and communication style reflect modern Saudi culture making her presence instantly more approachable than many humanoids built elsewhere. Her public debut at DeepFest in Riyadh revealed something important. Sarah switches naturally between Arabic and English, maintains steady eye contact, and responds with carefully timed expressions. Small pauses, subtle facial movements, and calm tone control create an interaction that feels less like a demo and more like a conversation. But this wasn't accidental. QSS deliberately built boundaries into Sarah's behavior. She avoids sensitive topics and instead focuses on respectful, welcoming interaction. That design choice matters because it shows how humanoid robots can be introduced into public spaces without friction. Sarah isn't just a robot. She's a cultural interface. Now, meet Mohammed. Mohammed is Saudi Arabia's first male humanoid robot from QSS, and his role is just as important. Designed for public engagement, Mohammed communicates fluently in Arabic and English and has gone through multiple design iterations already. That evolution signals something critical. QSS is actively refining how humanoid robots move, gesture, and interact in real environments. If humanoid robots are the face of Saudi Arabia's AI ambitions, the line is the environment they're being built for. This is not a traditional city. It's a 170-kilometer-long vertical structure cutting straight through the desert. Inside the line, there are no roads, no cars. The entire city is built around AI systems and high-speed transit, making movement fast, simple, and organized without traditional traffic. Homes, offices, schools, parks, and services are stacked vertically, so daily life happens within a five-minute walk. The entire system is planned to run on 100% renewable energy, with zero operational emissions. Originally, the line was designed to house up to 9 million people by 2045. But reality has started to reshape the timeline. Recent reports suggest that by 2030, only around 2.4 kilometers may be completed. That's less than 2% of the original vision. The reason isn't a lack of ambition. It's the sheer engineering difficulty of building something that has never existed before. And yet, construction is very real. In the hidden marina zone, four massive modules, 45, 46, 47, and 48, are already under development. Module 45 is the most advanced, with foundations and above-ground structures clearly visible. Module 46 is close behind, with more than 5,500 deep foundation piles driven into the ground using low-carbon concrete. Across this phase alone, over 16,000 piles are planned, making it the largest piling operation ever attempted. Automation is used across the entire project. GPS-guided drilling rigs place piles with centimeter-level accuracy. Specialized machines build steel reinforcement cages, which reduces manual labor and keeps the work consistent. To manage groundwater, the site runs the world's largest dewatering system. It uses more than 500 wells and thousands of sensors that operate day and night. Below the ground, tunnel boring machines are digging space for the spine. This is a high-speed electric rail system that will run along the full length of the city. When it is finished, the system is expected to move people from one end of the line to the other in about 20 minutes. All movement will be controlled by smart infrastructure. Beyond the buildings themselves, NEOM is also constructing massive solar farms, wind parks, and the world's largest green hydrogen plant in the Oxagon region. Together, these systems form the energy backbone that makes the line possible. The line may be progressing slower than originally promised, but what's already under construction is unlike anything on Earth. Saudi Arabia isn't just building robots or smart cities. Saudi Arabia is building the power source for tomorrow's AI. Because no matter how advanced robots become or how futuristic cities look, none of it works without one thing, massive computing infrastructure. And that's where Saudi Arabia's next move changes the game. In 2025, the kingdom announced the construction of hyperscale data centers built in direct partnership with the two most important chip makers on Earth, NVIDIA and AMD. Through a national company called Humane, Saudi Arabia is deploying tens of thousands of advanced AI chips to create what NVIDIA calls AI factories. These facilities are designed from the ground up to run artificial intelligence at extreme scale. Each one consumes as much power as a small city, 
and is optimized for training AI models, running real-time simulations, and coordinating physical systems. NVIDIA's role is critical. Its latest AI superchips are the same class of hardware used to train the world's most advanced models. In Saudi Arabia, these chips will simulate entire cities, train humanoid robots, optimize traffic for autonomous vehicles, and model industrial processes in places like Oxagon. At the same time, Saudi Arabia is building a parallel AI data center network with AMD. This second stack matters just as much. It avoids dependence on a single supplier and creates a diversified compute backbone capable of supporting open AI ecosystems, research workloads, and national scale applications. Together, these NVIDIA and AMD facilities provide rare sovereign computing at an industrial scale. This infrastructure will quietly power everything else you've seen so far. The humanoid robots don't learn without it. Robotaxis don't navigate without it. Ports don't automate. Airports don't optimize. Cities don't coordinate. In a world where AI progress is limited by access to chips, electricity, and space, Saudi Arabia has all three. That combination allows it to move faster than countries that rely on rented cloud capacity. Building powerful data centers is one thing. Using that intelligence to reshape the physical world is something else entirely. That's where Oxagon and Trojina come in. Oxagon is Saudi Arabia's answer to a future where factories, ports, and logistics run with minimal human intervention. Located on the Red Sea near one of the world's busiest trade routes, Oxagon is being designed as a fully automated industrial city. Its port has already made history by becoming the first in Saudi Arabia to operate fully remote-controlled, automated cranes. These systems don't just move containers. They use real-time AI to manage schedules, save energy, and reduce delays. But Oxagon isn't only about shipping. It's being built as a clean manufacturing hub powered entirely by renewable energy. Robotics, AI-managed supply chains, and digital twins allow factories to simulate production before anything is built. Instead of reacting to problems, the system predicts them. That's industrial intelligence at city scale. Now shift environments completely, from the sea to the mountains. Trojana is where Saudi Arabia pushes AI beyond automation and into climate engineering. Set high in the Sarawat Mountains, Trojana is designed to support year-round winter sports in a desert region. That only works with precise environmental control. AI systems manage snow production, temperature balance, water usage, and energy efficiency across the entire resort. Chemical-free snowmaking runs around the clock under tightly controlled conditions. Sensors track humidity, wind, and surface temperature to keep slopes stable while minimizing waste. Construction itself is a feat of coordination, with massive steel structures assembled at altitude and tunnel boring machines carving infrastructure deep into the mountains. Together, Oxagon and Trojina reveal the real ambition behind Saudi Arabia's technology push. This isn't about isolated smart projects. It's about using AI to redesign how industry works, how environments are controlled, and how entire regions operate. And this is still only part of the system. Up to this point, most of what Saudi Arabia is building feels massive and distant. Robots, cities, data centers. But this next step is different because it puts AI directly onto public streets. Saudi Arabia has launched public robo-taxi services in Riyadh through a partnership between Uber and WeRide, one of the world's leading autonomous driving firms. This marks the first time autonomous vehicles are available on Uber's platform in Riyadh. Riders can open the Uber app, select a WeRide robo-taxi, and travel on real routes in the city. Early deployments focus on key corridors, including areas near entertainment districts and major institutions, allowing the system to operate in predictable but busy environments. The technology behind these vehicles is Level 4 autonomy. That means the car can handle the entire driving task on its own within designated zones. A combination of LiDAR, cameras, and radar creates a detailed 360-degree understanding of the road, while onboard AI predicts traffic behavior and makes split-second decisions in real time. For now, a safety operator remains inside the vehicle. As performance data grows and regulations evolve, the system is designed to move toward fully driverless operation. What makes this important is scale. Robotaxis don't just demonstrate AI capability. They reduce congestion, improve road safety, and form the foundation for cities where transportation runs as a coordinated system. Most AI systems are tested on roads, in cities, or inside data centers. But Saudi Arabia is taking intelligent machines somewhere far more extreme, the deep ocean. In 2025, OceanQuest was launched as a deep-sea exploration initiative focused on environments beyond 200 meters below the surface. Based at King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, the program targets regions that are too dark, too cold, and too pressurized for humans to explore directly. OceanQuest deploys advanced research vessels, remotely operated vehicles, and autonomous submersibles designed to function under extreme conditions. These systems capture high-resolution imagery, collect geological and biological samples, and map underwater terrain that has never been documented before. Then AI uses this data in real time to find patterns and speed up discoveries. The Red Sea plays a central role in this effort.
Its unique environmental conditions make it one of the most valuable natural laboratories on the planet. Expeditions conducted with international partners are already uncovering new ecosystems and previously unknown forms of marine life. What makes OceanQuest stand out isn't just exploration, it's integration. The same AI techniques used to train humanoid robots, manage autonomous vehicles, and coordinate smart cities are now being applied to ocean science, climate research, and biotechnology. Saudi Arabia is building the largest airport on Earth. It's called King Salman International Airport, and it's being designed as a global hub for the next era of air travel. Located in Riyadh, the country's financial and administrative center, King Salman International Airport is being built to become the largest airport in the world by land area. Spanning roughly 57 square kilometers, it dwarfs today's major global hubs. When fully operational, it's expected to handle up to 120 million passengers annually by 2030, with long-term capacity reaching around 185 million passengers and 3.5 million tons of cargo each year. But size is only part of the story. This airport is designed as a highly automated logistics and mobility system. Six parallel runways allow for continuous high-volume operations, while AI-driven scheduling, traffic management, and cargo handling systems are planned to reduce delays and maximize efficiency. The goal isn't just scale, it's coordination. Architecturally, the project reflects a shift toward experience and sustainability. Designed by Foster Plus Partners, the terminals emphasize natural light, open spaces, and visual connections to the surrounding landscape. A central Wadi-style green loop links terminals with parks and nearby developments, turning the airport into an extension of the city rather than a detached transit zone. Construction began in early 2025, and visible progress is already underway. Runway foundations, service roads, and utility networks are in place, with new terminal structures rising alongside the existing airport footprint. This airport isn't just about travel, it's about movement at scale, of people, goods, and ideas. And in a future driven by automation, it becomes one of the most critical nodes in the entire system. Autonomy doesn't stop on the ground, it scales upward. That's where soccer comes in. A family of unmanned aerial vehicles developed locally by King Abdulaziz City for science and technology. Soccer, named after the Arabic word for falcon, represents a long-term push to build domestic capability in drone design, manufacturing, and operation. Early versions focused on reconnaissance and surveillance. Over time, the program expanded into longer-range, longer-endurance platforms capable of operating far beyond line of sight. The most advanced variant, Seika EOR-1, falls into the male category, medium-altitude, long-endurance. It can stay airborne for more than a full day, carry multi-sensor payloads, and operate across thousands of kilometers using satellite communications. Electro-optical cameras, infrared imaging, and laser targeting systems allow it to function day or night in complex environments. What matters here isn't just the airframe, it's integration. SACUR UAVs rely on the same intelligence stack seen elsewhere in this video. AI, for navigation, sensor fusion, and mission planning. Data collected from the air feeds directly into command systems, logistics planning, and situational awareness platforms. There is also a separate civilian version of SACR, used for tasks like firefighting, emergency response, and large-scale event monitoring, showing how aerial autonomy extends beyond defense into public safety. From humanoid robots to robotaxis to deep-sea vehicles, this is the final layer. Autonomy, now operating in three dimensions. All of this intelligence, robots, data centers, autonomous vehicles, depends on one thing that often gets overlooked, energy. That's where Sakaka Solar Power Plant comes in. Located in northern Saudi Arabia, Sakaka is a 300-megawatt utility-scale solar facility spread across roughly six square kilometers. It was the country's first major renewable power project and a clear signal that future infrastructure would need clean, scalable energy to survive. Sakaka uses more than a million solar panels mounted on single-axis tracking systems that follow the sun throughout the day. That design increases energy output while keeping costs low. An important detail, in a region with some of the highest solar exposure on Earth, the plant produces enough electricity to power tens of thousands of homes each year while cutting hundreds of thousands of tons of carbon emissions. But its real importance goes beyond numbers. Sakaka proved that large-scale renewable energy could work reliably in desert conditions. That success opened the door for much larger solar projects and helped create the energy backbone needed for AI data centers, smart cities, and industrial automation. In a future where computation demands massive power, Sakaka represents a quiet shift, from burning resources to sustaining intelligence. Just when it feels like Saudi Arabia has pushed technology as far as it can go, it introduces something that doesn't fit into any existing category, the cube, Mukab. Rising 400 meters in height, width, and depth, the cube is a structure so large it could hold around 20 Empire State Buildings inside. But this isn't just about size, it's about redefining how people experience space. 
Inside the cube, physical architecture blends with digital environments. Visitors won't just walk through buildings, they'll move through immersive virtual layers, floating platforms, and adaptive spaces that change based on events, experiences, or even time of day. The Cube will anchor a new downtown district in Riyadh, acting as both a cultural landmark and an experimental platform for future living. AI-driven systems are expected to manage crowd flow, climate control, lighting, and interactive experiences in real time, turning the structure into a responsive living space. Construction on the surrounding master plan is already well underway, with massive excavation completed and infrastructure taking shape. While timelines may evolve, the intent is clear. The Cube isn't about transportation, energy, or automation alone. It's about how humans live inside the systems they've built, and that's where this future finally becomes personal. This isn't just about what Saudi Arabia is building today. It's about how the future is being designed. If you want clear, grounded breakdowns of the world's most important technologies, subscribe for more.